ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلالة في النار أيها المسلمون The month of Ramadan has come and these days and these nights they are very special full of great blessing and benefit for a believer who is sincere sincere in his faith believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last day believing in the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and following his way great blessing in these days and nights and great opportunity to obtain mercy mercy and forgiveness and to rectify and to purify the soul Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned in his book شهر رمضان الذي انزل فيه القران هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم شهره فليصوم that the month of ramadan this is the month that the quran was revealed as a guidance as a guidance for mankind and a clarification of the guidance and the criterion and a criterion to be able to discern and to determine between that which is good and that which is evil and that which is upright and that which is foul between that which is truth and that which is falsehood a criterion the month of ramadan is the month of fasting and it's the month of the quran allah he says faman faman shahida minkum wa shahra faryasumhu and whoever from you he is present in that month and he must fast شهر رمضان شهر الصيام والقران والقيام the month of ramadan it is a month of fasting a month of fasting and a month of the recitation of the quran a month of standing in the night prayer شهر رمضان شهر الصلاه والزكاه والصدقات وطعام الطعام the month of ramadan is the month of establishing the prayer obligatory and not obligatory seeking the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the month of ramadan is the month of charity and being kind and looking out for those who are poor and in need giving the obligatory charity and the non obligatory charity the month of ramadan is a time for feeding the people seeking the reward from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala شهر رمضان شهر مجاهده النفس وجهاد الهوى والشيطان the month of ramadan is the month is the month of striving against the soul to be upright and obedient to be upright and obedient steadfast in the obedience of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the month of ramadan is the month of striving against the desires and fighting one's whims to be upright and to go straight and fighting the devil and the whispers of the shayateen the month of ramadan is a month of great of great striving a month of mercy for those who are sincere a month of forgiveness for those who take a path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in compliance to his laws and legislation and abiding by the sunan and the laws and the legal ways of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it has been reported authentically from the hadith of Abi Hurairah radhiyallahu anhu 
that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا دَخَلَ شَهْرُ رَمَضَانِ إِذَا دَخَلَ شَهْرُ رَمَضَانِ فُتِّحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ وَسُفِدَتْ الشَّيَاطِينَ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, whenever the month of Ramadan enters, the gates of paradise, all of them are wide open, and the gates of the hellfire, all of them are closed shut. And the devils, they are all chained and they are in shackles. They are all chained and they are in shackles. And when wording is Sahih Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Futihat abwab rahmah that the gates of mercy, they will be wide open. So Ramadan is a time, an opportunity. Most of khayrat wa barakat wa rahmati wa ghufran. It is a time of mercy and goodness and the time of seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, repenting from the sins, turning away from the actions of disobedience. This is the wisdom from turning away from the food and all of the affairs that break the fast to cultivate piety in the heart so that a believer, he will be able to leave off that which is haram and that which is impermissible at all times, to use the body parts and the pleasure of Allah and that which is allowed. This is the wisdom from the fast to purify the soul, to go straight. And in order to do this, a believer, he must have a pure intention. He must purify his intention and make sure that his fast his fast is for the sake of Allah alone and seeking his reward and based upon sincere faith and likewise the standing in the night prayer based upon sincere faith and it has been connected authentically from the hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said من صام رمضان إيمان واحتسابا إيمان واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه ومن قام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه that whoever fasts the month of Ramadan إيمانا واحتسابا out of sincere faith while hoping for the reward out of sincere faith while hoping for the reward then that which has proceeded will be forgiven from his sins and whoever stands in the night prayer and whoever stands in the night prayer, meaning in Ramadan, out of sincere faith, while hoping for the reward, that which has proceeded from his sins will be forgiven. This is an important condition with regards to the acceptance of all of the deeds, and even more emphasized in the daytime and the nighttime of Ramadan, and even more emphasized whenever it's with regards to the pillars and the foundations and the fundamentals of the deen. Every action that must be done, iman and wahtisaba, based upon sincere faith, based upon sincere faith, all the while hoping for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The actions of worship, they are actions that are means to draw near to Allah. A believer, he must believe. He must believe in Allah azza wa jal, that He is worthy of worship, and that He is the Lord of the creation, and the creator of all of this universe, and that He alone is the provider and sustainer, the one who gives life and gives death, and He is the one who is alive and never dies. To worship, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon sincere faith, to establish the fast and the prayer and all of the obligations, and to avoid the prohibitions, believing in Allah. Believing in the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the accountability in front of Him, tabaraka wa ta'ala. Performing the obligations and avoiding the prohibitions upon sincere faith. Believing that this is a legislation and Allah, and that these are obligations that must be performed. And that those who perform them, they will have a great reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the promise of His mercy in paradise. And that those who disbelieve or turn away in disobedience and rebellion, then they are threatened with the anger and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hellfire. Establishing the obligations in this manner. Iman and wahtisaba. Believing in Allah. Believing in the last day. Believing in the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And believing in his path and his sunnah and his way. Following that based upon sincere faith. Not customs. Not cultures. Not because the people are doing this. But rather because of faith. Because of faith and sincerity in the heart. Hoping for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iman and wahtisaba. Iman and wahtisaba, doing it for the sake of Allah. While one is hoping for the reward, not upon negligence, not upon heedlessness, not upon forgetfulness, but rather performing the actions of worship from the greatest of them, the salat, the obligatory salat, and from the greatest of them, likewise, the fast of the month of Ramadan, and also from the great actions of worship, standing in the night prayer, iman and wahtisaba, out of sincere faith while hoping for the reward, not out of heedlessness, not out of forgetfulness, not out of negligence, but rather performing it properly, inwardly and outwardly, striving to be humble and sincere, and seek the reward from Allah. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek His pleasure and His mercy, hoping that the action will be accepted and that He will have the favor of Allah azza wa jal, and that whenever He meets His Lord, Allah will be pleased with Him, and that His efforts will be accepted. He will fast in this manner, He will pray in this manner, He will seek knowledge in this manner, He will recite the Quran, and He will call the people to the deen in this manner with a pure intention, hoping for the reward. Likewise, not heedless and not forgetful, not heedless and not forgetful, where the body is worshiping Allah azza wa jal outwardly, but the mind and the heart is preoccupied with the worldly life. This is a great deficiency. This is a great weakness. The one who has the promise of forgiveness in this month from fasting and standing in the night prayer, he is the one who sama wa qama iman and wahtisaba. Iman and wahtisaba. He fasted and he stood in the night prayer out of sincere faith. Out of sincere faith and belief in Allah. And likewise, out of sincere hope. Hope for the mercy and the reward and the acceptance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu ma tasma'oon, astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiruhu. Innahu huwa al-ghafoor rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد It has been reported authentically from the hadith of Abi Hurairah رضي الله عنه that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said السيام جنة السيام جنة that the fasting it is a shield the fasting it is a shield meaning that whenever the fast is performed properly based upon sincere faith and perform where the heart is present and hoping for the reward from Allah with trust and reliance upon Allah. The fasting will be a shield for him. The fasting will be a shield for him to protect him from falling into that which is indecent and foul, from the lowly speech and from the lowly conduct and manners, and from falling into the sins and the actions of transgression. As-siyamu junna, fasting, whenever it is performed properly for the sake of Allah, it will be a means to prohibit a person from violating the prohibitions and from committing that which is impermissible. It will be a means to help him and to aid him to be upright and to perform the obligations in the best manner. Junna. Junna to minan ma'asi wa junna to minan nar. And likewise, it is a shield as well for the one who applies it properly and avoids that which is impermissible and stays away from the haram, fulfilling the obligations that are upon him in the best manner. Also, the fasting will be a means to protect him from the fire. It will be a means to protect him from the fire and the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, As-siyamu junna. وَإِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ صَوْمِ أَحَدِكُمْ فَلَا يَرْفُثْ وَلَا يَسْخَبَ وَفِي رِوَايَ وَلَا يَجْهَلْ The fasting, it is a shield. As-siyamu junna. And if it is the day that one of you is fasting, فَلَا يَرْفُثْ Then he should not say the foul and lowly speech. He should guard his tongue and protect his tongue from saying that which is indecent and unlawful. فَلَا يَرْفُثْ وَلَا يَسْخَبْ And he should not raise his voice likewise and come out of character. He should not yell at the people and belittle them. This is something a believer he will not do in any time, especially not in Ramadan, especially not while he's fasting. Because the fasting is a means to cultivate the fear of Allah and the heart of a believer and the remembrance of Allah and the fact that Allah is observing us and watching us and that we're going to be taken to account. So the believer who fasts in this manner, he will remember these affairs. Then let him not say anything that is foul or indecent. Then let him not say anything that is foul or indecent. But let him not raise his voice and yell at the people. And in one wording likewise, And he should not act foolish and in a manner of ignorance. And if somebody comes to him and tries to fight with him or call him names, then let him say, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. Then let him tell them, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. In order to remind his own self and to remind that individual likewise, if he's a believer, that we were fasting and that this screaming and yelling and fighting and arguing, this is a means to bring deficiency to the fast. A believer, in the beginning of the day, he has a great opportunity to have a great reward that only Allah knows the value of. That only Allah, He knows the value of. The value of the reward of fasting is something major and something great. But if a believer, he's not careful because of his tongue, because of his tongue and because of his actions, because of that which he does with his body parts and his eyes and his ears, because of his manners and because of his conduct while he's fasting, that reward can deplenish. That reward can deplenish and it can even go away entirely. It has been reported authentically from the hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, رُبَّ الصَّائِمٍ لَيْسَ لِمَنْ سِيَامِهِ إِلَّا ظَمَّةٍ In one wording, إِلَّا 
al jur wa ila al atash that maybe somebody he will be fasting and he will have nothing for his fasting except for the fact that he's thirsty and except for the fact that he's hungry meaning he was not able he was not able to control his tongue he was not able to control his desires yani to leave off that which is haram and he perpetrated that with no care or concern even while he's fasting even in the daytime of ramadan wa riyadhu billah na'udhu billahi min al khidlan this is great abandonment in khidlan that a person he will fast and leave off the food and drink which is normally permissible but he will not leave off the haram he will not leave off backbiting and spreading tales he will not leave off lying and cheating and taking the wealth unlawfully he will not leave off these affairs even while he's fasting even while he's fasting this is something foul for a believer. Likewise, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَرُبَّ قَائِمٍ لَيْسَ مِنْ قِيَامِهِ إِلَّا السَّحْرِ إِلَّا السَّحْرِ And maybe somebody, he will be standing in the night prayer. He will be standing in the night prayer, but he will have nothing from that except for the fact that he's up late at night and tired. And he meaning he will not have a reward. This is very possible because of a deficiency in faith. So the way to rectify that is to repent to Allah Azza wa Jal. وَأَنْ يَسُومَ الْمُؤْمِنُ مَضَانًا وَيَقُومُهُ إِيمَانًا وَحْتِسَابًا Iman and wahtisaba, that a believer he will fast the month of Ramadan and he will stand in the nights of Ramadan out of sincere faith, out of sincere faith and hoping for the reward from Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was asked about those people fasting, who, who has the greatest reward with Allah from those who fast? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, أَكْثَرُهُمْ ذِكْرًا لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجِلْ Those who remember Allah the most. Meaning all of the people, they are fasting from their food and their drink. But only a few of the believers are truly fasting. And the legislation of fasting is not to make the people hungry or to torture them by prohibiting them from their food and their drink and that which they desire. But rather to cultivate faith in their heart and to cultivate piety in their heart so that they will be able to comply to the commandments of Allah and abide by the legislation of Allah. And in turn, it will be a mercy for them and they will enter the paradise of Allah and be safe from His punishment. This is the wisdom from fasting. Fasting... With the, from the food and drink, no doubt this is an obligation. But even greater than that is to fast with the eyes. It's to fast with the eyes and to fast with the tongue and to fast from everything that is haram and forbidden and impermissible. A believer, he will take to his life in this month seriously, striving to benefit from this month, obtaining the blessing and the barakah of this month and the opportunity of mercy and the opportunity of forgiveness. And this is the time of repentance to sincerely return to Allah, to look into oneself, into one's life, into one's past, and to remember all of the favors and blessings of Allah, the good health and the good wealth and the prosperity and all that has come in one's life until this day, and to think likewise and to remember one's deficiency and being appreciative and showing thanks with regards to that. Rather, many times if we look into our life sincerely, we will see that we use the blessings of Allah and His disobedience. So we should be shy. But Allah, He's the most forgiving and He's the most merciful. And this is the time. This is the time for mercy and the time for forgiveness for those who take a path. May Allah grant us all success and the believers all together. Allahumma kfil al-Muslimina wal-Muslimat wal-Mu'minina wal-Mu'minat al-Ahya'i minhum wal-Amwat Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-Akhirati hasana wa qina azab al-Nar Allahumma aslih lana dinana al-ladhi huwa ismatu amrina wa aslih lana dunyana al-lati fiha ma'ashuna wa aslih lana akhiratana al-lati fiha ma'aduna wujjal al-hayata ziyadatan lana fi kulli khair wa al-mawta rahatan lana min kulli shar Allahumma habib ilayna al-Iman wa zayinhu fi kulubina wa kirrih ilayna al-kufra wa al-fusuq wa al-isyan Allahumma jajalna min الراشدين وتوفنا مسلمين وحقنا بالصالحين غير خزايا ولا مفتونين اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم